Friday and some people might want to, you know, get down the hill or go over the hill or wherever you need to go. And um, and I know people brought things to share, so I'm going to turn down the French cafe. So uh, I just want to welcome all of you to Mervyn School. Um, we are so delighted and excited to have you all here. Here are my two wonderful colleagues, Norm Brennan and Hello, Barbara Gazarian. And I'm Celine Mullen, for any of you who doesn't know. So we have this science lab here, which you can see is sort of a modified room. And then we have a, a real spiffy science lab for the middle school teachers that we'll take you up to in a little bit. So please help yourself to more food. And it doesn't matter if we're talking, just get up and help yourselves. Bathrooms, just so you know, they're unfortunately I'm at the farthest point from any bathrooms. So the regular school day, I limit to my <laughs> You want to go out, up into the front office area. There are two adult bathrooms there, or you can go out into the right, and you'll see the library right in front of us or in front of you. And there's an adult bathroom there, so you have to go out and you know pick either direction. They're equal distance, and you know there, there you go. So I have a couple of um, things that I uh, that I was going to share, and, but I know that there are some new people here and some people who you know haven't seen people in a long time. So maybe we'll just quickly go around and say you know what you teach and and, and what school you're with right now, and then and then we'll get started. That sounds good. So <laughs> <laughs> my name is Stacy Green, and I teach um, science to first through sixth grade at Berkeley Hall. So I just walked down from uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Maria DiMato. I teach uh, sixth grade earth science and eighth grade uh, physical science at Trinity Point School, Culver City. My name is Sonia Chernovsky. I teach fourth grade and I'm the science coordinator for Sinai Kiva Academy. Uh, Roz Wan, John Thomas Dye School, K through science. This kid in St. Mark's School, um, K through fourth grade science. Shannon Stevens, Valley by Shalom Day School, first through sixth grade. Susan Bagdasarian, um, Stephen S. Wise, gifted coordinator. Uh, Sean Collins, former science teacher at Curtis, and uh, I'm currently unattached. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to my job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm Sasha. I work at Crossroads, K through five science. I'm Ann Biedenwig. I'm at Chadwick, first through fifth grade science. I'm Matt Klein. I work at Turning Point, and I'm seventh grade science. Um, I'm Ann Istrin, fifth and sixth grade science at the Willows. I'm Haley Kleeman, sixth grade science at the Willows. I'm Darlene G. I'm um, teaching seventh and eighth at Calvary Christian School. Uh, TJ Fassler, fourth and fifth grade science, also at Willows. Lisa Nivarina. I teach at the Browerman School, kindergarten through sixth grade. Locke Gallagher, I teach at Carlthorpe School, 2 through 6. Joseph Rose, I teach at Village School, and it's 2 to 6. Okay. That's another one. So, um, oh, and someone new came. <laughs> you don't want to put you on the spot. Hey! Katie from Maimonides. Hey, Katie from Maimonides. She introduced me, Katie from Maimonides. <laughs>
Uh, and I would say that, you know, the teaching styles are very similar to what all your you guys are doing in your science classrooms. I mean, maybe the only difference is that we're moving at a faster pace and we might get more in in, in a year, but but maybe not. You know, it all, it all depends on, on how you guys do your class. But so our, when, if you look up in the back there, we have the rooms and that's what, you know, we're currently working on and I usually have things up there, you know, for the kids to know what, you know, remind them what we're working on in case anyone forgets. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, so that's why they're called rooms, and we have two classes of every level. And then, do you want? Do you guys want to speak about our upper school or what? Our middle school? Yeah, the middle school we have four levels, and once they complete room five, they come up to the middle school for upper school one. And the same thing, it's it's age age would be fifth grade, but we're teaching a sixth grade curriculum, so you go know, six through nine basically with curriculum in upper school. Uh, with the science, we have integrated, which Arka teaches. Arka is our transition teacher. She teaches room five down here in this room, and then she also teaches upper school one in middle school. So she's a great link for the kids as they leave the lower school and become middle school students. And then I teach the, the three oldest grades in the middle school, and then we try to line those up with somewhat with the standards that are going on in the public schools. But mostly I go by the national standards, and. Um, and we have a big dedication to Science Fair, which is a big part of our upper school two year. So, so, uh, so that's a, a little bit about our school and, and how we're structured. And the, in lower school, um, we are departmentalized a bit. They, and a lot of you guys have specialists in your school. So they're moving out and about for all different uh, specialists, whether it's music or math or um, even reading groups. They move around for reading groups as well. So um, it's nice for us as we get to specialize in, in, in what we like. And, and, uh, so I was just going to show a few things that I'm working on with my kids right now. Um, and these are really quick, and then they're going to present theirs, and then we'll open it up for sharing and, and tours and stuff. If you have any questions in the middle of it, please just raise your hand. Um, with rooms one right now, we're doing insects and spiders. And we're talking about, you know, arthropods. And um, so this is some of the stuff that, that we're doing right now. And um, we have a theme in lower school every year, a continent theme. And so this year it was South America. And we did a whole project on the understanding the Amazon, the rainforest, and the river. So that's what I'm doing in rooms one right now. We cover about five or six units a year. And you know, some years we, uh, do less in one area or more. My kids are really into insects and we got really into moths thanks to Roz. We've been, you at the last um, share did your moth thing. So now I have this pressure every time they come in to hide and conceal five moths in the room. And you can look around right now and see if you can find any. Although I took a few down. And so now it's just pressure. Where are they concealed? Every time they come in, they walk in. And so it's, it's kind of fun, but um, anyway, so we're really into insects and we're spending more time on it and we're just, we're going with it because I really like it. We, um, I have the digis, digiscopes and they are able, my, even my, you know, six-year-olds are able to put something under the microscope, take a picture of it, and then later we put it into PowerPoint and they're having so much fun labeling and playing with fonts and colors and mm -hmm. learning about all the parts. Anyways, in... Um, rooms two, where we started our big plant unit, and we've been talking about soil and compost, and um, we've done we just wrapped up a huge unit on water and the water cycle and water quality, and we got into aqueducts this year, and so we've been talking a lot about the aqueduct system, and we have a wonderful Latin teacher in upper school, and they do this whole Latin banquet and build. Um, some models of Roman aqueducts. And so we've had a couple upper school students come down and show us their aqueduct system. And so we've been having a lot of fun with that. We are finally officially in plants. And um, so the kids help me plant in the garden out there. We harvest a lot of food and I saute a lot of things in here because there's a little olive oil and salt. They all seem to love kale and chard and, you know. <laughs> so I win them over that way. Um, and we germinate a lot of our, our own seeds. 
um, or our own plans would germinate. So that's going on back there. And one thing that I started to do last year that was a huge success, so I'm going to do it again this year, is playing with shrinky dinks, um, which were huge when I was a kid, and I'm obsessed with shrinky dinks. And anything I can do with shrinky dinks, I, I like to do. And so we've been doing plant cell shrinky dinks, which are really fun. And I just that was what I was going to show today for you guys. And so this is what it ends up coming out as. And this is what they start with. And what I did last year for open house was all their shrinky dinks. I tied on fishing wire mm -hmm. and I hung them from here in the light. Mm -hmm. And I put stagger them at all different um, lengths. And I put one class on this side and one class on the other. And at open house, it was, you know, all these colors. It looked, you know, almost like the, you know, stained glass windows. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you can buy this Shrinky Dink plant and animal cell kit online, and it's really expensive. Um, and I just found that you can actually just order plain old Shrinky Dinks and make your own template, which I did. The templates that they send have all the parts filled inside, so I was like, well, what does the kid do besides color it in? So I tell them they have to use four different parts of the cell that they learned about, and of course for plant cells, they must put chloroplast in it. So anyways, I just colored this one, and I made this template myself, and um, I, you don't want them quite so big, so this size becomes this, and it is so fun to put it into the toaster oven. So I have the toaster oven warm, and if anyone wants to make a shrinky dink to take home, you totally can. I cut, I just cut this and this for everyone, because even if you just want to take it home to uh, remember and do, I mean, you can do anything with this. It works really well with plant cells. And of course, part of the unit, we're looking at all kinds of plant cells under the microscope, but to make this, they are thrilled to pieces with it. And it just takes 30 seconds, so it's so easy. Anyway, so, so these are really fun. I'm happy to let um, you guys color them in with colored pencil. Does anyone want me to explain how you do a shrinky thing? You all know. You all know. Anyway. So uh, it worked out really well. My only suggestion is we did initials, and they have to really write their initials big because when it shrinks down, sometimes it's it's not legible. And so this student was certain that this was not a P; it was a letter D. And I said, "But the rest of the initials are yours, and everyone's playing theirs." <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's not. It's not. I mean, went this huge. To do, can I do two? I'm like, fine, make another one, and I'll keep this as my sample. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we so you buy the, the shrinky dinks? Oh, online, there's several different companies that um, sell it, and it's pretty good. I just Google get Yeah, just okay. Google shrinky dink okay. packs. I mean, they're like $10.95 for 50 mm -hmm. and I cut them in half, because otherwise it's way too big. And so you can do a whole class with just one pack. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really easy. Anyways, I will be happy to pass those out and give them to people, um, and it's... Really fun. The other thing I was going to show you is in uh, rooms three we're doing alternative energy and we've been exploring um, wind energy recently and I, from some recycled products that I found, these are discarded wood blocks that our contractor here did not want so I collected them and these obviously are paper towel rolls and these make the wind tower and then I have this kind of fancy one that, that works. Um, and so we watched this one. I have some really fun, I have a really fun website to show you that gets kids excited about what the wind can do. But anyways, we have these that we make, and I just hot glue them down. And then I take a little motor, and I attach um, oxygen tubing, any medical supply store. And I bought one package of oxygen tubing five years ago, and I still have plenty. So, but oxygen tubing is the thinnest tubing you can buy, um, so you have to get it at a medical, medical supply. Anyways, the kids make their windmills, which of course the decoration part is, you know, the mm -hmm. And um, what I found is that these paper windmills don't really hold up to a lot of glowing, mm -hmm. and unless you put a sequence on either end and sandwich it, and then I might even hot glue, I hot glue the other ends too, but this really makes it sturdy this way. So then I use a bamboo skewer, shove it inside the oxygen tubing, and then, you know, you're ready to start measuring some voltage. So, we put it up on the wind tower, each group, whoops, and then you attach it here to the shaft, and then I have voltmeters, and I'm sure everyone has voltmeters. You hook them on, I have one person holding the voltmeter, 
one person holding the motor and the other person blowing, and they are thrilled. They have competitions who can generate the most electricity. Then we take them outside, and last week we took ours outside, and there was quite a bit of wind, and they were thrilled to see, you know, the, the voltmeter, you know, moving and generating, you know, 25 millivolts. And then we took it up, which we'll, I'll take you to, up on our hill up there, and we, you know, I was talking to them about how, you know, where you position a wind tower and where you create a wind farm is really important. You need to be in an area where there's wind. If we do it out there, there's not as much wind because there's buildings in the way. Anyway, and so a lot of the kids are going to make these towers at home, and these, um, they got to take these home for another project, so they all have these at home already. But anyways, it is really fun to blow in it, and, and I can hook it up to a voltmeter later if anyone wants to see exactly how it works. But um, this is what I'm doing with my in rooms three right now, and it's been a lot of fun. There was a great article in the LA Times about five or six years ago that talked all about the job market for working in a wind tower. And they had a really cool thing, uh, diagram of wind towers and all the different parts. And so I sketched what they drew. And I made the one for everyone if you want to take one home. Um, it's really easy for them to learn about a wind tower and how really massive they are. The, the top of the tower, this part right here, is actually the size of a small school bus in the modern wind towers. And these uh, blades actually have to travel by train because they are, um, some of them are 100 feet long. And so they can't be flown in. So they actually travel across the country. So anyways, it, it, if you do some research on, on the construction of wind towers, it's actually pretty interesting. And you can't be afraid of heights. These don't have elevators. They have you know, a couple hundred stairs that if you're you know, a maintenance worker, you have to be prepared to climb up them. So there's actually a physical test, a physical ability test to work on one of these. So my students just find all those little tidbits so interesting. And then we label the inside parts and the outside parts, and then we make our wind towers. And it's, it's a really fun unit. So I have some of these if anyone wants. If you need help with the parts, I can tell you what the parts are. Yeah, so it's a little confusing sometimes. And then, um, lastly, I had one or two. Uh -huh. the other thing I was going to tell you? That's three things. Well, anyways, uh, just very quickly, does everyone or anyone get Science Weekly? This publication, who, get, who gets it? Do you, do you like it? I get it online, though. Oh, you get it online. Okay. So I give these out to my students, and they have three different levels, and every month there's a different topic. This is watersheds. Last month was grass. I think before that there was soybeans, glaciers, and it is great for right after a test or when you have 10 minutes, and there's really fun activities inside. There's always a math and a language component to it, and it's a bit pricey, but... Um, they have, I think they make five or six different levels, and some of the advanced ones are, are pretty detail oriented. I, you know, I, I really enjoy looking at it, but it, it is um, a lot. Oh, this was the last thing I want to show you. In rooms two, we also got really into decomposers, and to be a part of the official decomposer team, you get to have like a badge and a membership in that group. And so if you're a fungi, if you're a protist, if you're a bacteria, you get to be in that cool group. And so we're growing oyster mushrooms, and we're going to saute them and eat them with some of our veggies. And so we're really excited to have um, decomposers growing in our room. And this is called Back to the Roots, and they're a California company. I don't know if any, has anyone heard of them? They're a small company, and they're a group of guys from Stanford that this was their senior project while they were at Stanford in, I don't know, I can't remember what, the project, what, their, what, what they were doing it for. But anyways, this was their senior project and then they marketed it. And um, I actually met them at the governor's inauguration randomly. And uh, so I ordered them. So in 10 days you get oyster mushrooms and you can eat them. And then you turn the box around and you can start the process all over again. So this is really fun for, for if you're doing anything with soil or decomposition um, or having a lot of fun. And you have to mist it twice a day, and so we have an official mister that comes over and gets to mist it. That's always a fun job. Is it mister? Should be mister, mister. Yeah, mister, mister. <laughs> instead of cell division, I'm going to tell you the real story about my name. So I tell the kids that I'm Miss Niver like Diver. That was before I got married. And then I was getting married. And when I first met George, he told me that Rhina rhymed with vagina. 
<laughs> so when I was getting married, I was like, oh, that might be a problem for me. So I called my friend, I said, I don't really think I can change my name, and I told her why. And she says, no, you're a world traveler, you run with China. So I never get to tell that story, but I can say that. <laughs>
And what the students do after they select their animal is they get to select the piece of art or the photo of their animal they're going to work from. So they either do that in library or science and they take it to art. And then the art teacher has, she made this for me to bring. Her name is also Lisa. And Lisa brought this because I think it makes a difference to see the kind of paper and the sheen. She's giving them such high quality materials to work with. So they, in her room, very different from the book that I made before I knew her, um, you can see that when they work with her, and I can teach you how to, this is a technology called an AxMag, an ebook. So here's an example of what they do. So this is, I think the jellyfish has some of these shimmery papers. Mm -hmm. So you can pass those around. They have beautiful texture, they're beautiful colors. And Lisa's very dedicated, and she will go out and find, like one of the kids made a snow leopard, and she came up to me, she said, you know, it doesn't really look like a snow leopard, so I'm gonna go get some more papers. I'm like, really? I think for third grade it's a perfect snow leopard. So it's not good enough? So she's very committed. So they really look good. So you can see that they, um, the best thing, my favorite part, all the kids will tell you, is the sound of the page turning. Uh -huh. So the, in science, they do the research and they type it up. The way that works is I have a lot of parent volunteers. I tried to do it by myself and I just didn't think the quality of the kids writing, they needed a little bit more support to get from one step to the next. I have all this research, I filled up all my spots on my page, I definitely have this, they get to do fun facts. Um, a lot of this actually built off of some of the stuff Sasha did with those flip cards. But this is, they type it up, they get to pick their own font and um, so we build this. AxMag is a free technology. So these I can't remember, these I think I took pictures of, sometimes I scan them. You make a PDF and you upload the PDF to AxMag. The one problem of using photos is then your PDF is gigantic. So then you have to have Adobe something, I don't know which one I have. You open that up, a fifth grader taught me. You open that up and you save it as a compressed file and then it's you can do it online to get this free piece. The best thing about this is every one of the 43rd graders can have the book and I didn't kill my printer or my ink or a bunch of trees. I can send this to all the third grade parents and everybody can see what's going on. So that's um, been a really great third grade project. That's our Steve Drinkins collaboration. So it does take a lot of people and everyone's been gotten some, I have to interrupt, sorry. The um, massive fer Ferris wheel truck cannot make a turn because there's a couple cars in the way. Is there a Mini Cooper, black with white stripes? Oh. Anyone Mini Cooper? Yes. <laughs> 6 CEV. Oh no, that's clearly gay. That's clearly gay. <laughs> They're only like five feet in his way. Okay. So you have to move uh, you know, more towards Mohan. There's lots of spots. Okay. An Audi gray station wagon. Anyone? Uh, there was a brand new bus riding up there, and I was like, I don't think that's anyone. Is that okay? Is that anyone in my group? I want to know where they're teaching. I'll take it. I'd be happy to move it for you. I have a charcoal gray Odyssey 6TGX. Anyone? Charcoal gray Odyssey? No? Okay, and then a white Acura SUV. 6N FB493. All right, I feel like we just had a word from our sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody else feel yeah. yeah, like that? Uh, okay. And if you're a really good scientist, you'd be driving a Chevy Volt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should get sponsored by Chevy Volt. Anyway, so this project does take three parents, I mean, three specialists, parent volunteers, collaboration group work, independent work. It does take a very long time. But we have decided as a team that it's worth it. And uh, the art teacher does display these as basically one of her biggest projects for open house. So now that I have them scanned, they can be in my room also. Um, another project I do that's integrated is I have the, six, the kindergartners learn about the five senses. They love to do anything with their buddies. And so to be able to have kindergarten sixth grade in science was, it's like, 
Mecca or something. So the I found, I teach at a Jewish school, and I found a poem from Ecclesiastes that's about the five senses. The individual lines of the poem are beyond the reach of the kindergartners by themselves. But I cut up um, the poem into strips, and the sixth graders read it to their buddy, and then they design a page together. So what happens in class, they come together, the sixth grader reads this line to the kindergartner, they create this piece, and we take pictures. Then they all go away, and the sixth graders and I make pages, so they, have the, they can input however they want. They have their buddy's pictures. Um, you can see this one, he had a lot of um, talent, and Jordan is a great artist, tech, a technological artist, so he cut them out. He tried to explain to me how to do it, but you'll have to call him. And so they each get to add their own piece. So I have two of these books for each K-6 group, and again, I can send them to all the kindergarten, all the sixth grade parents. It can be up in any room, it's on the website. So it takes a project and it gives a little bit more access. So the AxMag technology is very easy to use. I highly recommend it. I'm not sponsored by them, but I am the other one. And here's, this is another project that's integrated. I think traditionally we think of, you know, how can we match the state standards, or how can you match, what is the art teacher doing, or is the technology teacher willing to work with you? So one of the things that I've been doing is trying to figure out how to match the content to the issues. So I went to a presentation with the Jewish World Watch that was talking about the uh, Congo conflict minerals. And I went to the presentation, I told them, I said, tomorrow I'm going to teach this to my fourth graders. And they said, you can't. And I said, yes, I can. So I taught my fourth graders, we were doing a rocks and minerals lesson, and I explained to them that the people in the Congo are unsafe in their homes. So the people that work with Congo issues think you can't teach young children about it because they don't want you to tell them that the women are being raped and dragged from their homes. So I told them that I could figure out how to help the fourth graders. So the fourth graders know that people are not nice and you can show a picture of guns, they see that. So we, um, my kids got very inspired because I did a whole presentation called Earth Science, Who Cares? And we talked about do the people of Japan care about earthquakes? And, different tie-ins between things they know about and maybe something they want to know about. So the issue with the conflict minerals is they're in all of our electronics. So the kids and I talked about it's okay to have an iPhone, it's okay to have an iPad, you could have every device on the planet, but shouldn't other people get to be safe too? So the kids got really inspired and we wrote a letter to the president and some other officials. And I have to tell you, it was really nice to get a letter back from the president and the first lady, but the only thing the kids cared about was no, Bo, yeah. Bo the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the two biggest excitements of my project, how did the letter get to the president? I said I put the address in a stamp. <laughs> they said, but how did it get there? And I said, do we need to walk to the mailbox in fourth grade? Like they really don't sort of seem to still have that. That was hard. Um, they couldn't really understand how I had the president's address. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we're personal friends. And, and Bo the dog. So if you'd like a picture of Bo the dog, I can get one. This other picture that's on the front here, Eric Garcetti is the president of the LA City Council. And we wrote to Eric Garcetti and a few other people after we watched a documentary. The island group of Tuvalu, which is very close to Samoa and Tonga, where I was this summer, um, Tuvalu is very, very hard to get to. And Tuvalu is uh, having a problem. Tuvalu is the first, you probably know this, but Tuvalu is one of the first island groups where people will have to leave. The, the issue of the water rising, for my students, they were very confused. How could the water get high enough you know, that people couldn't live there. They were like, if, you know, can't people kind of swim around or build taller? So we talked about the groundwater being infiltrated. And, you know, if you can't grow crops and you can't drink water, it's very hard to stay. So it is very far from anything else. So we did get a very lovely letter from Eric Garcetti here in Los Angeles and a nice form letter from the president. And the kids are really inspired. They want to help the people. So 
Um, some of my students did get together on the weekend and have a lemonade stand, and um, they told me, don't worry, Mrs. Reina, we have $30, and now the people couldn't move. <laughs> so I told them it was very nice of them to want to help. Um, one of the last things I'm going to show you, I think, is Simon Basher. So Simon Basher is an author who we called on Skype. He lives in London, and he has a lot of books. You might be familiar with them if you just think about these little square books that are kind of thick. There's a math one, there's a grammar one, he's a huge range of titles. So we were studying the water cycle, and it turns out one of the parents in my class knows him. So convinced Simon Basher to speak with us on the phone. So the first graders were very excited, and they asked incredible questions. We did do the questions in advance, and I had them for them to read on the spot. But they had a really nice conversation with him, and he was very lovely. We made our own book, which my book does work. And in our book, each of the kids, we came up with a bunch of different words about the water cycle. The kids wrote sentences that I typed up, and then they illustrated them. And the best part about the book, I think, is the last page. Simon Basher offered the kids the opportunity that he would make them their own page in the book. So he asked them for, I think there's eight or nine characters. These are from all different books. Like Comma Cops is obviously from Grammar and Circles from the math book. And then he made this. By the next day, he sent this to us. He made us our own character. So it was really special for the kids. We printed it. Every kid took it home. He made so many fans that day. Um, all the kids want to own every single side of Basher book. They wonder when can we call him again. We've been writing to a different author now who's in Singapore, but we can't seem to Skype her because of the time change. London turned out to be a little bit easier. Um, this is um, integrating with technology. So I was watching your windmills and I was thinking it was so perfect because my students have been very busy in Energyville. Energyville is built by Chevron. It's definitely propaganda, but they did a really good job. So um, someone that I know that's moving to Indonesia to start a solar wind community, that's the work that he does, recently looked at the site for me because my kids love it and I love it, but it's a little past my real knowledge of some of this stuff. So I had one of my students, um, he wanted to... All right, so... Can you dare? Thingdom, 
And it's from the South Kensington Science Museum. Science museums have amazing, amazing resources. I have a whole page on my website of all of the links that I use in class. And Bingham is definitely one of my personal favorites. The kids love it. You have to take a deep breath, though, when the things mate. One of my kids said to me, it's having a seizure. No. Oh. I was like, yeah. And this is a good part of the game. So the things have, you, you have different challenges. So the challenge at this level is you have to make your thing green. So you pick a potential partner. And it will tell you you have a 100% chance of being green. Your babies have a 100% chance of being green, 25%. As you move through the levels, sometimes you have to do um, a two-step mating. So you might get the gene, but you have to figure out will it come later. And the conversations the kids are having are really impressive. There's, it's a very interactive, it's a very fun game. It has lots of um, happy graphics in each verse, each round. They have different hats. I think in one they actually have funny sunglasses. So it's definitely very kid oriented. I have a lot of my friends playing now because I'm such an evangelist for Thingdom. I'm like, Thingdom is so much fun. But the, um, the sixth graders, I, I normally teach genetics not this way, but I actually think this is better and more memorable. And in fact, a few of the fourth graders have come in. Can't we play that game that the sixth graders are playing? None of my kids have figured out that the games that are on the server exist outside of my room. <laughs> so I, I continue to let them think that. The, um, the last game I want to show you is Cellcraft. Cellcraft is by Carolina Biological Supply. And it's actually hosted on Not Doppler of all strange places. This is an incredible, incredible game. The kids have to get different organelles. They have to learn how to use them. They have to help the platypuses. Now, um, I didn't have a screenshot from the kids, so yes, I defeated the virus. I got an A+. Plus. But the kids don't always figure it out. And they sometimes they'll look at me like, oh my god, I got a D. I'm like, OK, well, what are you going to do now? I'm going to play again. So they're very inspired. I love the conversation in the room when they're playing cell crap because they're screaming at each other, where's the nucleic acids? How do you rebuild the cell wall? I'm like, I, there's not a lot I can do that kids are screaming at each other, how do you find nucleic acids in the cell? <laughs> they really get it, like I'll say to them, why don't you do this? No, if I make more slicer enzymes, I'm going to run out of glucose, and then I'm not going to have enough energy, and what am I going to do with my mitochondria? All right, um, <laughs> let's play again. <laughs> it, there are some really good things. A lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of my classes now are one-to-one -one with computers. The second graders, um, I think even you know, the second graders aren't, but I like them to play games in pairs anyway. Um, I put a couple of books on here. The um, Quiet, the name of that book is The Power of Introverts. That's one where they talk a lot about independent work. I'm happy to send you all the names and links. But Brain Rules is by Dr. John Medina that Judy showed me, gave me, and that is a great book. Teaching Digital Natives is Mark Krensky. I actually reviewed that book, and if you don't want to read the whole thing, I'm happy to send you my very long review. It's on wandering educators. And Global Achievement Gap is the Tony Wagner book. Two other things um, is there's a new, I don't know how new it is, it's new to me. There's a group called ACT, Accomplished California Teachers. They would love you to get involved. And the, one of the things they're struggling with is how to get people to connect. So they're very, very impressed that this is the third time this year we've had over 25 teachers show up. And they want to know how do we make that happen. So that is a place they have differently different groups. They have elementary, middle, high. They're getting involved in legislation. And um, I know you have a lot of spare time between 2 and 3 in the morning. Just wanted to fill that for you. And then I personally am working on an article called Every Teacher Needs a Village. And some of you have very kindly sent me um, quotes either about this group or science in general. And I think that it's valuable for people to know that what we do as specialists is challenging. And a lot, most, the vast majority of administ administrators have never been a specialist. They don't always kind of get where we're at. And I believe that most of you probably feel like I'm stalking you by email, so I, I try only to send one email a month if that's possible for this group. This week I know is a little bit more. But you are all invited on Monday. We have Trash for Teaching coming to our school all day long. Joseph and I met them at the National Science Teachers Conference, and the guy's awesome, and there's an OK Go video 
on YouTube about um, Rube Goldberg. Some of you, I see you're nodding, you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, it was in one of the emails. And I'll let you know how it goes, but they are, I think, going to be great. Next Thursday, I have um, John, I think you say his name is Alvani. He's rated the number three global presenter for Al Gore's climate change work. And his slides are so um, copyrighted, we, we cannot video or take any photos. But I'd love to have any of you that can show up. It would be 10.30 next Thursday. Um, I can't videotape it in San send share it with you. And he said he's very limited on his ability to present. So if you'd like to hear him, you're invited. Um, I've moved a lot of my education stuff onto my travel site because it's I'm a traveling teacher. So at we said go travel.com slash just for kids are all my websites. I have a lot of them that I use in the classroom. Now that I use so many of them, kids are bringing me more and more. So I have a couple new immunology ones. There's a, a site who knew called nobelprize.org that has kids games for science. It makes sense, but I don't know how you would know that. So um, if you have any games you want to share, you want to put on my site, please let me know. And um, thank you all for being here and for everyone that helped me when I switched to teaching kindergarten through sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Kindergarten 6th grade project before it went online.